Morning, Zeph. Is this working? Yep, it's working. Trying to get in. Jasmine. All right, folks, it is 10 a.m. There's still one or two people that haven't shown up, but we'll go ahead and kind of get started. Hopefully you can see that we're actually in the shop again, finally, okay? So um, what we've got, what, I think about three weeks left in this quarter. And with the, the possibility that you guys may be coming back at some point, um, the last I heard, maybe February sometime, which to me is just coconuts. I, if they're going to bring you guys back, they should bring you guys back at the beginning of, of the third quarter, which would be like the end of January, like the 30th of January or 31st or something like that. Anyway, um, I'm going to assume that you guys will be back at some point. <clears throat> the difficulty with that is 
is that we will have nine weeks or less, uh, most likely less, to try and get something done in here and enjoy ourselves a little bit. Um, you guys all know, being in advance, that prior to being allowed to work in the shop, you have to pass the safety test, okay? So we're gonna spend a little bit of time over the course of the next three weeks muddling our way through the safety test. Um, I'm doing the same thing with the beginning class and the intermediate class, um, trying to get them to the point where they can pass it a lot sooner than they normally would. As you guys know, or you should know, um, I have a website, right? It is, if this thing would stop, it is um, doo -doo 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 -doo, gphsmanufacturing.org. And over on the left-hand side, you can click on traditional woodworking and scroll down. And there's a copy of a, a blank copy of the safety test and a copy of the safety test with all the answers, right? So when you click on that, you've got a copy of it with all the answers. So that's, that's one resource you have in regards to preparing for and passing the safety test, okay? Um, if you look at today's modules, okay? Um, where are we here, modules? And you look at Tuesday, okay? What I have there is basically what we're doing today and then I pulled a number of questions directly from the safety test. They are word for word from the safety test that apply or somewhat apply to the miter saw. Now, some of these questions are kind of a blanket statement. For example, it's your responsibility to make sure each machine is adjusted properly before you use it. That's true um, in regards to a number of machines, not just the miter saw. So I threw a few of those in there. But then I also have the questions that are absolutely um, that absolutely apply solely to the miter saw. Okay, for example, a board must be at least how long to safely cut its length on the miter saw? That's six inches. Uh, what machine is the best choice to accurately cross cut a board that's five and a half inches wide? The miter saw. Okay, um, order of operations is kind of a blanket statement. It involves a lot of different uh, machines. The edge of your board must be tight against the fence on either side of the blade when cross cutting on the miter saw. And the last one. How many cuts does it take to accurately cut a board length on miter saw? It takes two. The first cut is a trimming and squaring cut. The second cut cuts the board to final length, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the miter saw a little bit today. Um, and then tomorrow we'll take a, a little bit of time and go over bandsaw and drill press. Um, I'll do the same thing. I'll have some questions pulled and set on Wednesday's module. Um, and then there'll be a short five question quiz on the miter saw. And we will go over those five questions um, prior to you being cut loose to take the quiz tomorrow. Okay, so it kind of follows the same pattern we've been, we've been dealing with, seems like a year now, almost a year now. Um, so, so that's kind of what we're gonna do, okay? So let's go ahead and start what we're doing here. Okay, hopefully you guys can all hear me. It looks like you can. I can see the mic little thing bouncing around. So this, the, the actual, name of this machine is a sliding compound miter saw. A lot of people call this a chop saw. This is not a chop saw. A chop saw, all it does is cut straight down and make a 90 degree cut. You'll see those in metal shops, things like that. That's a chopping motion. The name for this machine, sliding compound miter saw, comes from this. First of all, let's start with miter. Okay, a miter. Okay, is any angled cut similar to this? So if I make an angled cut on this board, let's do a little. That's a miter, right? That's basically how you would do a picture frame. Okay. That's also a miter. It doesn't have to be 45 degrees. That is a miter. That's where the name miter comes from in this machine. Compound miter comes from this. Have you ever seen crown molding in a house um, that is at the ceiling where the wall meets the ceiling? I can't, I can't, I can't do that right. Right? In the corners where they come together, it takes a compound cut to make that joint. Okay? And a compound cut is any cut that involves two angles being cut at the same time. That is a compound angle. Okay, that's the only way to make those cuts on crown molding 
is to cut both angles at the same time. You can't simply cut that angle and then make a second cut and cut the second angle. It doesn't work that way. It's got to be a compound cut. Okay, so that's how we get the term compound miter. All right. The last part of the name, sliding compound miter saw, is due to the fact that the machine slides, the head slides. The only thing that accomplishes is it increases the width of cut capability, okay? If this machine didn't slide, this is a 12 inch sliding compound miter saw, what that means is the blade is 12 inches diameter, okay? If this didn't slide, the maximum width of cut you could make on this machine is six inches wide, okay? And if it was a miter cut, that width gets even smaller, okay? So the fact that it slides increases the width capacity of this machine to 12 inches, okay? So that's why it's called a sliding compound miter saw. As far as you guys are concerned, you can simply call it a miter saw, okay? You do not have to say sliding compound miter saw. Just call it a miter saw. Do not call it a chop saw. It's not a chop saw, okay? The main purpose of this machine is to cut a board to final accurate length, okay? This is the last machine that you'll use in the materials preparation process, I guess you'd say. Once you've got a board to thickness using the joiner, the planer, the drum sander, and then taking it to the proper final width using the joiner and the table saw, you would then come to this machine and cut it, cross cut it to final accurate length. At that point, you take your board and you do whatever joinery you need to do on it, dados, rabbits, dovetails, box joints, whatever you're doing, any decorative work on the router table, um, edge work, things like that, prior to final assembly. So in our order of operations, we do the faces, then the edges, then the ends. So this machine is the last step in prepping a board, okay? It accomplishes a couple different things. Not only does it create the final length of a board, but it also creates eight different 90 degree angles. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it ensures as long as the machine is set up properly, as long as the blade itself is 90 degrees to the table, and as long as the blade itself is 90 degrees to the fence, it will create all eight of those 90 degree angles, assuming you do your cut properly. What I mean by that is, how many cuts does it take to cut a board to length, okay? It takes two cuts. Let's say you take a board like this, and you measure to make your mark for your final length, and you measure from here and make a mark and cut it to final length. It's not accurate, right? It's gonna be a different length from here to your mark as here. So your very first cut, all it does is square one end of the board. Once you've squared one end of the board, you can measure from that first cut, make a mark, draw a line, cut the final length. Okay, so it takes two cuts to cut a board to length. All right, you have to start with one good end. Okay, that's your first cut. All right, so that's the name of a miter saw. That's the basic process of doing it. Um, let's see here. There's a lot more to this machine than it seems, but let's go over a couple basic safety things. Okay, well, first, let me describe this. If you have to make more than one board the same length, in other words, if you have to cut two or more boards to the same length, what do you always have to use? Anybody. Type your answer in the chat. If you're cutting more than one board to the same length, what must you always use or do? Exactly. You got to use a stop block, okay? So if I'm using a stop block, it doesn't matter whether you use it on this side of the blade on this side of the blade. It makes no difference, all right? The only thing you have to remember is 
you're either going to do this or you're going to do this. You always have to hold the board down. You're never going to cross your arms to make a cut. Okay? So let's say the stop block is going to be on this side. The way we set it up, let's say we want to cut a board 12 inches long. Let's say 10. All I have to do is take my tape, bring it down, set the left side of the tooth on my 10 inch mark, hold the tape, slide it up to it, clamp it in place. Every single time you do this, just like anything else, you're gonna measure twice before you cut. So we're gonna pull the tape away, put it back, double check it. I'm at 10 inches, okay? So here's one safety aspect of using the miter saw. Okay, let's say I've already trimmed this end square. Okay, I've made my first cut. Everything here is 90 degrees. 90 degrees to the edges, 90 degrees to the faces. That's the end, it goes against the stop. Now I can hold the board here, or I can hold it here. If the stop was all the way over here, I'd have to hold it like this, okay? I'm gonna hold it right here, okay? I'm gonna make my cut. You always have to let the blade come to a complete stop before you raise it up. Here's why. Watch what happens to that piece that's stuck between the stop and the blade when I raise the blade. Moves, right? The teeth, right, are thicker than the blade. They stick out just a little bit. So when you raise the blade, those teeth are going to touch the end of that board and move it. If this blade is still moving when you do that, in other words, if I come up before the blade comes to a complete stop, I'm taking a chance on kicking this board out because it's still moving. Okay, so you got to let the blade come to a complete stop. All right? And never cross your arms. Please don't do that. Really bad idea. Okay? So that's one thing. There was another I can't think of right off the top of my head. Uh, all right, let's talk um, feeds and speeds, okay? I've told you guys over and over and over again on a number of occasions that the rate at which you feed a piece of material into a machine or a cutter or the rate at which you feed a cutter or a blade or a machine through the board has a direct impact on the quality of cut. So for example, how fast you feed a board into the table saw has a direct effect on the quality of your cut. How fast you feed a board through the router bit on a router table has a direct effect on the quality of your cut. How fast you feed the panel router through the board. The board is static, not moving on the panel router. You're moving the cutter. The, the, Okay, has a direct effect. Same thing on the panel saw, you're moving the saw, not the board. Um, on the band saws, you're moving the board, not the machine. On the drill press, you're using, moving the machine, the drill bit, not the board. Okay, the board is static, the board is not moving. On the planer and the drum sander, that's a controlled situation. On the planer and the drum sander, as soon as that board is grabbed or taken by the machine, it's fed through that machine at a specific speed, okay, or a specific feed rate, okay. The cutter head on the planer, the sanding head on the drum sander is also moving at a specific speed, okay. That's your cutter speed or feeds and speeds. That's a speed portion of feeds and speeds. So the, the rate at which a board is machined is controllable on every machine in here, and it has a direct effect on the quality of cut. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So if I take a board like this, okay, and I make a nice, slow cut. Let it come to a stop. I have a nice, clean cut, and I'll show you this in a second. I controlled the feed rate. The speed of the blade, we can't control. It's going to be constant. If I change my feed rate, okay, and I feed too fast, that's the result. All right. You guys can obviously, should be able to obviously see 
the difference in quality of cut here, right? This was the fast one, this was the slow, smooth one, okay? So that's a really um, graphic representation of how the feed rate or the speed affects your cut. Max trying to get in, but it's having a hard time. Okay, thank you, Zeph. Max? Matt, okay. Um, all right, thank you for letting me know. So um, one of the interesting thing is, things is that in advanced woods, my hope is that you guys start to show an interest in and start to use the CNCs, all right? By the time you guys come back, I'm going to have a couple projects, not set up, but ready to more easily attempt for you guys to do on the CNCs. Because if you look at it, we're only gonna have at best nine weeks to not only get through the safety test and to pick your projects and to get the material and get started on them, but chances are we're not even gonna start with a full nine weeks when we come back. So it could be six, seven or eight weeks in a single quarter. We're not gonna have time to take on big projects. So I'm trying to come up with some smaller projects that you guys can do um, that you can easily get done in the amount of time you have. Uh, there's Matt. He's trying to get in. Okay, so that's one of the goals I have. I have a, that's a goal, um, is to do that. One of the things I've seen, and let's see if I can find it here. I want to show it to you guys. It's pretty cool. I think you guys saw the, uh, the video of it, but I'll try and pull it up here real quick and show it to you. <laughs> Now, when I say the word cutting board, um, a lot of you have an idea of, wow, there's some pretty cool ones out there. Um, it's just gluing a bunch of boards up and things like that. Um, but there's more to it than that on some of these. So let me show you one of these I found. I think, I think we watched a video on this before the break. But uh, I'm actually getting ready. I just sent in the required paperwork to um, get the tools I need. I think you guys saw this. Um, let me know if you did. Um, this is one of them right here, I think. And I'll just real quick show you what this guy did. Now, I, we've done inlays before in here. Not a lot of them, but we've done inlays. I'm going to show you the final result. Okay, we've done inlays in here, but the, the amount of detail on this inlay in this cutting board is phenomenal. Okay, there's a very specific process and a couple of very specific tools or bits that are necessary to get this kind of detail. Now, when you first start doing these, there is no way you're going to get this kind of detail. There's a hell of a lot to it, but we can do pretty darn good especially with the different types of bits that we can get for this type, this sort of inlay. Okay. So that's one of the things, let me see if I can find a different one. He did some, he's done some incredibly cool ones. Um, let's, there's a couple of them. I think I showed you, why is that playing? I think I showed you this one right here. Um, if I'm not mistaken. I think I showed you the guy doing this one. Um, just incredibly beautiful inlay work. Um, really cool, okay? So um, that's one of the things I'm thinking of. There's also um, a small stool, if I can get the, the jigs set up on the CNC, that is really neat. The cool thing about this stool is, some of you may remember, you may not, it's been a while, um, Jordan Main making a walnut rocking chair. I don't know if any of you guys remember that or not. Beautiful, beautiful walnut rocking chair. This is the same joinery techniques, the same setups uh, on these stools that is used in the rocking chair. So in other words, if somebody was a junior and wanted to learn the basics of, a, of this rocking chair um, by doing one of these stools <clears throat> and then came back next year when we have a full year and decided to take on this rocking chair, it's an incredible project. Um, by the time Jordan was done with this rocking chair, it was probably, I mean, it won, he, he entered it in the state or in the county fair and took first place. He entered in the state and kicked butt up there. Um, 
but this this rocking chair was probably worth a good three to five thousand dollars um and it took him off and on over the course of a full year to complete it but it's a gorgeous piece of furniture one of the nice if not the nicest piece of furniture i've ever seen come out of here so i do hope that you guys will start to think about the possibility of using the cncs to do stuff okay um so that's one of the things i want to try and get set up for when you guys come back um so that you have the opportunity to do something like that um so yeah that's some of the things i'm thinking of if you guys come up with something that is a straightforward um project that can be done in a shorter amount of time please let me know i'll start looking into it and i'll make sure that we have what we need to accomplish something like that okay so in other words if you, if you say wow those cutting boards are really cool i'd like to do an inlaid cutting board i will make sure i have some nicer materials you know some walnuts and some hard maples and things like that here um, that would allow you to get started on something like that immediately when you come back. Okay, so these are things I want you to start thinking about. I want to start thinking about coming back and what you might want to do. Now, there's a couple of you. I know Ryan has um, a little table that he was working on. I have not thrown any of that stuff away. So there's also the possibility you can just complete what you, start, what you were working on when you left here. You may have already forgotten what you were doing when you left here. But I think, Jasmine, I think I still have what you were doing. I know Ryan, I have Ryan's small table. Um, that's okay, she crushed. So I haven't tossed anything. Everything's still kind of sitting here the way it was. Um, pretty much a mess, but your stuff is still here. So that's, that's another possibility. But please start thinking about that um, project you might consider doing. And you're not going to have a lot of time, man. We're going to have to get through the safety test in a day or two. We're not going to be able to take a couple days and go over to the science lab and look through the plans and things like that and figure out what we want to do. Um, you know, there's not going to be time for the normal semester work. Um, it's going to be kind of a push. And I do want you guys to be able to, once you come back, I do want you guys to be able to do something and do something nice that's worth spending your time. On. Okay. So um, I can't tell you guys how, how much I want to get you guys back in here. This is driving me coconuts. Um, this kind of stuff we're doing right now. So um, please, 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 um, if you have ideas, let me know um so that you have access to it if you decide you want to look let's go through here and oh well, that's just a cool cutting board let's see he did another one that was just crazy i mean he's done some unbelievable cutting boards it's just really neat there's that thing that would start like that and he kind of goes through the process of setting it up too. He's done some really neat ones. If you guys want to kind of look at some of the stuff he's done. Um, I mean, yeah, there's some, you look at some of these and it's like, wow, man. I mean, he's done some incredible, incredible stuff. Um, I mean, he gets good money for these things. I think he does them on commission. Um, he does a lot of these on commission. So in other words, somebody says, this is what I'd like. Show me your design and I'll pay you to do it. Um, and it's some really, really neat stuff. So anyway, what I was trying to get to is so that you know, Woodsmith Library, right? That's where our plans are. And if that little talking thing would go away, please go the hell away. Okay, I'm going to log out. Okay, it's my school email right dbrannon at grantspass.k12.or.us and then the password is lee one l e i g h and the number one that will give you access to the issues okay so um i'm gonna i'm going to put in the chat it yeah matt it should be everything should be here um i haven't tossed anything so i'm, I'm everything should be here matt remind me what it was a coffee table. What what kind of wood were you using? And do you remember where in the shop you left it? I just want to make double sure. Um, anyway, um, uh, yeah? I left it over on the shelf walking into the laser room, like that far right shelf in the middle. Everything should be sitting there. Okay. It should be here, man. I haven't tossed anything. So right. it should be here. That, that's my hope. Um, so if you guys do need to get into Woodsmith Library,
Jesus, I can't even type. I'm, I'm trying to. Okay, that's the email address login. And that's the password. Okay, so please start looking. I mean, we're if, if they do bring you guys back sometime in the third quarter, it's going to get here a lot faster than you think. Okay, so um, just remember this: you're not going to. I'm not going to set you up with a project that's going to take 16 weeks to do. You know, the goal here is to get something that you guys can complete. Um, in the amount of time that we have. And we'll have no idea how much time we have until we get to that point. So I really would like some of you to start thinking about the possibility of CNC work or laser work. Um, so that's, that's one of the things. Um, yeah, so please keep that in mind, all right? Um, we're going to, so okay, so just so you guys know, tomorrow, We'll do real quick on band saws and, and drill presses um, and then go over the five questions that I'll have on the miter saw and then I'll let you go to take the quiz. Um, Thursday, I'm not sure what I'm going to do Thursday. I'm, I, I don't think that far in advance, but I'll find something. I know we did, uh, I believe we did table saw and joiner and planer and drum sander like a long time ago in this quarter, at least I think we did. Um, but uh, towards the end of the quarter, like the last week of the quarter, we'll just go over the safety test um, and make sure we go through the whole thing once or twice. So it's kind of, we kind of refresh it in your mind. You guys got to remember something, man. Um, if we come back in February, you've basically been gone for a year. I mean, there is no way anybody is going to remember everything they remember, need to remember for the safety test after being gone for a year. And it's just, it's just too long. I mean, that's just, that's absolutely crazy that it's been this long. Um, it's, it's just, it just boggles the mind. So um, keep your eyes and ears open. As soon as I hear something about opening back up, I will definitely let you know. You guys will probably know when I will, because whenever our fearless leader, the, the superintendent sends an email to us saying, hey, we're going to try and open on this date. It's usually a blanket email that he sends out to families at the same time. So you guys will probably know as soon as I do. Um, so keep that in mind. And it's not going to be a normal setup either. It's going to be one of these, they call it a hybrid schedule, where you'll only be here like two days, two days or three days. I think it's two days out of the week is the only days you'll be here. You'll be in class for like an hour and 10 minutes, but only two days out of the week. So that that's bad. Um, so yeah, I know when, if they keep the same schedule, there will be no school on Wednesdays. That's, a, that's a, a prep day for all staff the entire day. And then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, you'll come here either Monday and Tuesday or you'll come here Thursday and Friday, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what they're gonna do. But it's gonna be shorter than usual. So start thinking about what you wanna get done in the very, very short amount of time you might have, okay? And at any point in time, if you have thoughts, send them to me, email, say them in the chat here, whatever you come up with. If you have a thought about something you'd like to do, let me know and I'll start looking into it and I'll make sure we have what you need to get started immediately. As opposed to having to, oh, okay, I'm gonna go to Medford and get the material over the weekend and we'll have it next week. No, it's gotta be here right now. So it helps me to get what you need before you get back, okay? So I've blabbered on for long enough. Um, I will, yeah, that's going to be it for today, I guess. Um, so you guys take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too much. All I'm sitting here is doing and talking, is sitting and talking because there's nobody else here and it's, it's boring and it's lonely. So you guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for being here and I will see you guys tomorrow morning, okay? Bye, folks.